fish are just laid up, man. It's just time of day, I think, now. <clears throat> we'll fix it. You're the guide. I've never had a day when the fish don't bite. They always when bite. When, they always bite when, when I'm fishing. When I'm guiding, it's always... Got him on that hoppery. Nice. Saw him coming from about a three foot away. Like when it hits the water, don't they? Boy, stripping these lines is really not as much fun as you think. Here it's like, oh, sandpaper city. He's not happy about this. He can hear that line too. I'm gonna see it. I do like that blue bug. Out. Get him? The Cromer. Beautiful. Women. edition of Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup, we join Larry Larson from the Snake River in Idaho, not far from his home in Pocatello. Larry and Kelly are fishing trophy bows and cut bows that have come up river from a reservoir in search of cooler water. It is early fall and a tractor nymph suspended deep below hopper patterns is the preferred technique. We fished that bank, that's where that Bruin had that fish. Yeah, oh, we're, the where the couch thing was, remember yeah. that great big yeah, yeah. fatty that was in there? Yeah. Got him. There you go, fatty. How'd you like that? And in our fly tying go segment, Davy Watt provides us proper methods for palmering hackle. In this excerpt from Wet Fly Tying, a Fly Fish TV instructional video, you get a close look at how an expert really does it. Big stem. You know what? Just get your finger on like that and just make a little print there. Just like that. That excess out of there. I took it from the bank. I worked the bank out two or three foot. In this week's instructional, Kelly is back. This time to show us how he jigs streamers with a weighted line. All this is coming right up on Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup. We're gonna run some fluoro and then uh, I don't know what it is down here, but these, these big rainbows and hybrids seem to like blues and, and greens really well. You know, last time we fished that lightning blue thing. It worked pretty well. You know, yeah, it really doesn't match. You my fish off. It was great. <laughs> well, that's questionable. But you know, they're really not imitating. You know, any of the any of the aquatic insects in here. I think it's just bright and shiny, and that's something they like. And we're fishing them on real heavy wire hooks. Are you going to go? We're running off the bend of the hook, right? Or do you run off the? Uh, well, let's run off the bend of the hook on this top one, and yeah. then if, and then sometimes if I need to get a little bit deeper, I'll run off the hook eye to a, a okay. second dropper. And we'll then, start with just a dropper. Just a little foam Moorish hopper to use this stuff. This stuff is, God, it's crazy strong. It's uh, SA's floral stuff. Start long. Yeah, start long. We can always go short. <clears throat> Going with the blue boy. Well, we got blue shirts on. We might as well keep did you the that just Did you do that to match me? So I did. I did. called. I called Penny. <laughs> so what knot are you tying there? You just doing improved or? No, this is a, I'll show you. It's incredible. We call it the Davy knot because Davy Watt and sh it's a figure eight knot. Like a you're gonna make rock me climbing knot? Yeah, exactly what it is. You're gonna make me do this again, try to hit that eye again. So it's the simplest knot of it, especially for dry flies. It, it, there's no knot when you leave it. You just go over the top, once over the top, come under the bottom one, grab it. Slick. I've never, he uses it for tarpon. I mean, I use right. it for, I mean, using it for streamers when I'm not looping. It's ridiculous. You're about ready to float into that stick. Go past it, same angle. Definitely got some Ooh, fish working one, the bottom. There's one right there. 
Oh, it's a, oh, I blew him out. No, he's circling Kill. it. He's circling it. He's looking. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I hit right on top and just I dropped it. He circled it. Nice fish. Right there, see those worried two about shadows? Can you see him out there? They aren't too worried about it. Boy, I thought he was going to eat that hopper, didn't you? Ah. Ooh, it landed right on his head. We can see there's, this one right there's down in two front of them right there. I can see him just one set up nice back there. See him right behind. where he's at right now. There's Darren. one right underneath my bug right now. He's going downstream. And there's two of them in a row right there. There he goes. That's somebody. That's a little better, huh? That'll work. That'll work. Oh, he's into the gob. The blue demon. Oh, he's drinking. <laughs> oh, he gobbed me. Did he get the bug? Huh? No, he's in the tree. He dragged my whole rig through that tree. That same tree as last year? No, we were down below last it year. It was that tree last year. Back to the left. Let's try right down the pipe. Yep. Right down. Gonna happen. There you go. Now Let's go out. Now I'm just dragging. Just bring it out another. Yeah. Getting that little chop. Oh yeah, there's a hopper dropper. Hopper eat. eater. Nice. He's a little hopper eater. Nice. Okay, keep him away from the Keep him away from the log. Well, there you go. That's a good one on the topper, buddy. Get that out of his way. Nice. nice. Just that you, he's got pretty on that side. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Fish Double. juggling. That'll get cut. <laughs> no, I don't think so. That footage is going to cost some money. That's going to cost me money. That thing hooked. Got Get him. that thing hooked. Got it. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's running at me. It's a big fish. Whoa! Oh, how about that one? Oh. Go open action. <laughs> These guys are hot. Oh, my God. These guys are hot. I hope nobody hot. saw that. Sheep Camp 1. This is Sheep Camp 2. <laughs> <laughs> we have, have some issues. Back in the game. A pretty good fish, huh? A little bigger than that last one. That should be you dropped your rod. There we go. Now we're back in the back in the game. Whoa! Like some of that wood. Got help. Hate the blue one. Oh, buddy, got the blue. What do you call it? Oh, you're gonna have to name it blue demon. Yeah, about that. Ate the little blue, little blue lightning bug. Then I've got a hopper on there, and so it's pretty air resistant. You're you're slowing everything down, but I still have to be able to reach out far enough to set the cast, set the cast. So ideally, what happens is that the the line lands above the fly like that but way over there okay so what I've, I've got a shark skin i've got a, a weight forward trout shark skin on which casts super easy you can hear it zipping through the lines and what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up so the line lands above it now if you've got compound currents you know you're going to have to mend now and then but when you've got 40 50 feet of line out you're not going to mend down to that line you can sit and mess with it and mess with it but all you're doing is messing with your flies and so First thing I'm going to do, if you notice, I'm not trying to do this little tuck cast like that. I'm not trying to make this fish on. Is it a monster? Yeah. I make a nice controlled open loop, reaches it slipping out, and there's the line straight above the fly. But it's all one movement as the line's going forward. Go forward, boom. I finish it up, super easy. And now my line's above the fly, so the fly's going to float into the fish first. If you can just all at once, it's, it's pretty, it's really should be the most base. It should be the first cast you learn. 
reach casting is everything as far as getting a good drift you know regardless if you're walking or in a boat but I mean you should be able to get the line above but it seems to be about the fourth thing people first want to learn to cast then they want to learn to double haul and then but as a <laughs> then fish, mend yeah and, and then then you see people doing this all the time they're just mending and watch the fly it just keeps bouncing out of its lane and it's hard to do without disrupting the whole right. drift there's three fish sitting there. Could be in a digestive pause. You're about to be in a hook in my face pause. He's under it. Got him. There you go, fatty. How'd you like that? How'd you like that, Cuddy? <laughs> Slow down, Kelly. Oh, Cuddy must. Oh, Cuddy. Oh, he's doing the roll. Cutty, eat. That's a cutty. Big old hybrid, man. That's a cut. Shorten that wrapper up so little. There's a cutty. Hey, there you go. That's a cutty. There's another main snake uh, toad for you. Nice job, buddy. He's going for a swim. Yeah, how do you like that, buddy? Nice <laughs> job. Well, you got me sold here, Larry. Uh, not many people know about this stretch, and I know Darren's the outfitter. Uh, tell me more. I mean, where you guys go, what you... We have a series of, uh, a group of guides that are all seasoned veterans, you know. We've got guides from up in Swan Valley area. Myself, I'm in Pocatello right here next to the action. Darren's in in Idaho Falls, and we just specialize in this trophy trout fishing down on this lower end of the main snake. Um, our license runs from the confluence of the Henry's Fork and the South Fork and runs almost to Lake Walcott. Definitely got it to we ourselves, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean that's just amazing. That On the Henry's Fork, that would be what you came for, right? Yeah. Or the Madison, where yeah. I live. That's a great fish. You know, it's nice we're located, you know, right in between Idaho Falls and Pocatello is where we're at right now. You've got major airports, hotels, eateries, you know. It really is, makes it for an easy, easy trip. Just make sure that all the fibers are flared nice and even as you come down. There we go, we get nearly to the tail end. Just okay. ahead on Fly Fish TV with Not Kelly Gallup, a lesson on palmering hackle from Davy Watt. I'm going to pick up this ribbon tinsel and I'm going to bring it and make sure that it's to the right side of the hackle. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to strip off all of the waste fiber like this. Each side, one side, two side, this side. And you can go about further in your tining process by a couple of different ways. If you're dealing with hackle that's got thick stem, you know what, just get your finger like that and just make a little crimp there, just like that. And what that does, it kind of flattens the stem and reduces the amount of bulk. And that hackle is always tidied underneath, just like that, underneath to the shank of the hook, touched to the right side of the thread, one thread wrap over the top to make sure you've got it secured in position. Never, ever tie the hackle in on top of the shank of the hook, always below. And I'll explain to you the reason why. Let me just make a couple more security turns here. If you tie the hackle on top of the shank of the hook, as you start to wind it, you're going to bend that hackle back over itself like that to, to proceed to wind. Also, it's more beneficial to wind a hackle away from you than it is towards you. And particularly in the case of a palmwood hackle, it's very, very difficult. It's, it's easier to maintain what I call relative tension of wind during the process of wind and also regulate that you've got equal distancing of, of, the, of the turns of that hackle as you go down. Anyways, uh, just make sure you've got that family secure, and if you're happy about that, that's fine. You don't necessarily have to cut this off right now. You could do that afterwards. Pick up your hackle plies. Okay, grip the hackle by the tip, and what we're going to do, we're going to make one full turn at the shoulder. And once we've done that, we're very, very gently going to work our way down the body of the fly. Don't apply too much tension because you'll bust the hackle. Just make sure that all the fibers are flared nice and even as you come down. 
There we go, we get nearly to the tail end. Okay, this is not particularly difficult, but just watch exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up this ribbon tinsel and I'm going to bring it and make sure that it's to the right side of the hackle. Follow that? Now if you have the confidence to do it, which I do, as long as you maintain tension on that ribbon tinsel, you can remove your hackle pliers. Now, don't go through the laborious process of trying to weave it in and out of those hackle fibers as you go. If you want to get a good wind, you know what, get that ribbon tinsel and just whip that through there at 50 mile an hour. And if you do it, it'll spring all those hackle fibers out of the way. If you deliberately try to wind that slow, I guarantee you, you'll trap them down. Okay, and then we got to the thread. Usual technique, right side, back up. As our security turns, we can break off the excess of stem. Cut that out. Make sure you don't catch the thread when you cut that out. And then we've got that pinewood hackle wind. So you go out, you throw down, you pick up, and then you drop your rod. Critical is, is that you strip that excess, but you don't strip more than what's dropping. Coming up on Fly Fish TV with here, Kelly Gallup, the... jigging streamers on a sinking line really is our lift. lesson from Kelly. Uh, I like to do a vertical jig. I like it to go up about a two foot and then drop down a two foot and then come up like this. And it's a crayfish type thing or a wounded minnow, whatever. Just something that's going up and down. It's a slow water or slow retrieve. So what you do is you just pick up and then it's critical that you strip that excess. You don't strip so fast that you impede the drop of the fly. You simply pick up and then let it drop and that's when it's so critical that you're strip. So you throw it out, you, you, you do your jig up and then you strip at exactly the speed you think the fly is dropping. I'm letting this fly, I'm using a sinking line and I'm just picking up but the one thing you watch is you, you lift your rod, you're just trying to get the, you're picking the fly up and down, but you make sure you slip that excess out of there. I took it from the bank. I worked the bank out two or three foot and didn't get an eat, and now I'm just gonna let it dive. You can lose some flies this way, by the way. But I let it get down, and I got a tight line. Now I'm gonna do a double step up, and you see I strip all that excess, and you watch that line right where it goes in. If you're picking up and you get an eat, you'll be golden. If you're dropping and you give a bunch of slack, they eat it on the drop a lot. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kind of do a modified here. I'm, I'm just kind of slow jigging back and forth there. But you watch your line where it goes in the water. This, it's hard to do with a sinking line because the line's dark. But you just watch it, Any, you know, just like an indicator. And if it moves, man, slam it. He's looking, nope. The key is to keep your, you're still keeping a low rod when you do that. Even if you're picking it up and you're, you're, you're thrumming the rod like this, you notice that every time I do that, because I'm slowing my retrieve and I'm trying to get a whole different action out of the fly, I'm trying to get it to go up and down right now instead of just in one level but I still continuously have the rod pointing at the fly. Be cognizant of the fact that it's not always the same. A cold, cloudy day like this, where the water's cooled down, you might have to slow things down, do a little of that modified vertical jerk strip like that. You get on a hot, sunny day, and the fish are just railing everything, and you're just as fast as you can do with a jerk strip. You've got to adapt, whichever one the day tells you. It's just like when we switch the flies. You switch the fly to find the color they like. Once you find that, if they're not eating the color and you're gone through everything, you've got to adapt your cast and your retrieve and decide which one works best for that day. If you do that, I guarantee you're going to catch more fish. That's it for this edition of Fly Fish TV with Kelly Gallup. We hope you enjoy the show and that you'll remember our sponsors and guests who made it possible. A special thanks to Larry Larson and Black Dog Outfitters for the great fishing and hospitality. Also thanks to Davey Watt for his tying demonstration and tips on palmering hackle. And as usual, thanks to Kelly Gallup for sharing his fishing knowledge and friends so that we all can be better anglers.